Are you looking to create a change control log in Excel? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because today we're going to be building a change control template from scratch and I'll be sharing with you some of the key columns uh, and data points that you're going to want to collect. So I have, before we begin, I have actually created a whole video on change control. So if you want to check that out, you know, why you would want to build this template, when to build it, and, and a better understanding of change control as a process in general, then do check that video out. I'll drop a link in the description. And one other quick uh, preface to this video, if you want to buy this template so you don't have to follow this video along and create it yourself, then you can do so. There'll be a link in the description below for that as well. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, for less than the price of a cup of coffee. So um, it's not going to be too expensive, but I just thought I'd let you know uh, if you did want to save some time. So with all that in mind, let's get started. So the first thing I like to do uh, is, is kind of put some kind of key pieces of information at the top. So you want to kind of create a little bit of a, a an overview just so for anyone who opens this up has an understanding of what's uh, what it's kind of referring to. So I like to um, to do a little bit of formatting as well. So I'm gonna make that a little bit lighter actually. Uh, and I'm gonna put a box around this. So yeah, the kind of key pieces of information I would recommend you capture here are just something, you know, like the project name. I did a control C and a control V there. Um, project manager. And the other ones I would recommend that you just kind of document um, in here are um, last updated. So get rid of that. So last updated, double click up there to kind of make the column the width of the text. I'm going to select these cells, control C down here, control V and last updated by. So yeah, this information is kind of crucial. We know what the uh, change control log is referencing, what project, we know who's responsible for the project in terms of the project manager, who's who's updated this change um, control log. Typically that will be the project manager uh, and the last updated um, by, I should put date in there. Uh, uh, so that, that's the date, sorry. We could put, like, put this in here just if you want some further clarification. So I'd recommend that at the top and I'm a bit pedantic, I want that in capitals. So we've got that here. Then we move on to the actual columns themselves. So these are the ones I recommend. Do bear in mind that depending on the different, um, you know, there's various different templates out there. I'm gonna suggest the ones that I use as a project manager, I think are useful. You will find other templates out there that are maybe slightly different, word is slightly different, maybe there's less columns, maybe there's more columns. Um, not every project management template is the same. Um, do bear that in mind, but the ones I'm going to include here are the ones you're going to want to use. Um, you could you could even you know remove some if you did want, but as I say, these are the ones I would recommend. So the first one we're going to have ch uh, ch uh, change request ID, uh, and you could put you know a, a hashtag in there as a as a reference number. So all this is going to be doing is if you need to refer to the change request, then you could literally refer to the number. Um, and that will be much easier uh, down the line, uh, particularly when decisions are made against them. So what I've done there is I've put some grey shading in and I've, I've bolded. This is going to be a column header. So we want to differentiate this uh, from all of the information that that follows. Um, and I'll do some formatting as we go along and, and also perhaps at the end as well. So we've got the change request ID. And what that's going to be is that is literally going to be a number. So it could be hashtag one. Uh, it could be like hashtag two. Or you could literally just do the number. So one, two, three, four, five, etc. The next column uh, I'm going to suggest is type. So this is the type of change request uh, that is, you know, being flagged or documented or even raised. So here you could have an example. I'm going to give you some examples of data to include as well as we go along, just so you understand how these columns work. So this could be something like product or it could be marketing. You get the idea. I'll leave them in just so you can kind of follow along. Next, we can have description. So this isn't uh, an overview, you, or an area that you can provide an overview of the change request. So this is kind of, yeah, as I say, a couple of sentences you want to put in here are on what you want to potentially raise. Next, we have impact. And I will talk about the options in a second, because what we're going to be building is some data validation. So this will be a drop down. Same again for status. And the same again for priority. Just make sure I spelled that correctly. Then I would recommend this column. So report to senior management. 
And that's gonna be a yes, no flag. Um, but as I say, we'll build out the key in a moment. I'm gonna put some wrap text in here and I'm gonna make this a bit bigger just to make sure that this, um, you know, looks good. I've double clicked there just to bring this down. Um, next one is an action. So what action is gonna be taken on the change request? We're gonna have a submitted date. So when the change request is put forward to senior management, we're gonna have a decision date. So when the change request, when we can expect some news on what's happening with the change request, uh, and that relates or pertains to the status column that we're gonna build out in a moment. We are gonna have an assigned to, so who is kind of in charge of this change request. And we're gonna have an area called notes, so, or comments. This is where you can obviously build out some notes or comments pertaining to the um, change request itself. So that is essentially, this is gonna be our, the, the majority of the change control log. Now what we need to do is we just need to make some amendments just to make sure that we have, um, I'm actually gonna wipe this out for now. Um, make some amendments just so the, the template works better for us. So as I say, let's build the key out. First, actually, before I do, I just wanna change these columns. So I've left clicked up here I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and left click here to select both of them. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to format the cells. I'm gonna change this to date. Um, and you can obviously, depending on, you can probably tell by my accent I'm in the UK, uh, depending on where you are, you can reflect uh, what you're kind of used to or what you want to see. This could be even US. Um, obviously the numbers will be around a different order, um, but let's just do that for now. You get the idea. So these, when I put in, um, let's put today's date in. Uh, forget what you're in now as well. Right, so when I put that in, it's obviously going to have that kind of um, formatting. Let's build this cross. Now let's build the key. You could put the key at the bottom, wouldn't recommend it because when you start typing data in and you, and you change request log builds up, it could get in the way. So what I like to do is scroll across and we're gonna build it over here. I'm just gonna put the word key at the top uh, and this is when we're building our data validation. So the ones that we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna suggest that we have some data validation for are impact, status, priority, and report to senior management. I'll just put it, uh, report, yeah, RSM. I'll just put it as that for now, just so it's kind of uh, compact. RSM, report to senior management. So let's put this in, let's put that in a gray, put that in a gray. Now, impact. The options here I'm going to suggest are scope. So is the change request pertaining to the scope of the project or um, um, budget, time or quality? Put some, I'm going to put some bordering here. So the next so the status, let's put that bordering as well. The status is uh, I'm going to suggest will be open, work in progress. Accepted, so is the change request accepted, rejected, or deferred? So obviously if it's deferred, then it, there may be some further work. It may even be with a few amendments that the change request is then later approved. Priority, we're gonna have low, medium, high, and critical. I'm gonna put business critical in here because it makes a little bit more sense. It gives a little bit more context. And the report to senior management field we're gonna have a no and a yes flag. Um, you could actually have this as reported to senior to senior senior management, and that's a flag. You know, have, has it been raised yet? Have you made it? You know, have you sent it up the chain um, or report to senior management? Um, yeah, I'll actually leave that as reported for now. So let's just do that, and we're gonna put that bordering around. Now we just need to build the data validation, and then we are finished. So to do that, the impact you could you could select the whole column and build the data validation. Um, and then remove it from perhaps these uh, cells because you don't want it on those cells. Or you could just kind of keep adding to, you know, as, as you build out new rows, you could keep adding the data validation. I'll just do it on these. Uh, actually, no, let's do it on the whole column and then you don't need to do it again. So select the column. We're going data, uh, data validation, data validation again. Now allow list source um, so we want the impact option. So I'm left clicking here, 
So this is where it's been getting the information from. Make sure that's all like that. Press OK. Now you'll see everything in this um, column has the drop down that we've defined here. So if we wanted to, if we added uh, any kind of more uh, options on the impact um, drop down options, then we could add them in the bottom and just change that referencing. So I'm just going to quickly remove them from here because we don't need the drop downs on these these um, on these cells. So same again, data. Uh, data validation and we want to have any value okay so now it hasn't got the drop down on here but it does from these cells onwards we just need to do it for status so i'll just do it for these uh, no i'll do the same concept just so you see how it works uh, and also so for the template will be kind of optimized if you were to buy it list so status select all of those left click make sure it's p4 um, down to P8. If I added more options on the bottom, just make sure this would be like P9, P10, you get the idea, just make sure it's referenced. Press OK. Let's remove these options, which is important because we've got a last updated date here. We don't want it, the drop down, for instance, to be in here. So we need to just go on like that. Data, data validation, and we want to go any value. Priority, we're getting there. I know it's a bit slow. <laughs> But you get the idea. I just want you to fully understand how this works. It may be useful for other templates you need to build as well. List. So let's go across. We need priority this time. Press OK. Uh, and let's just get rid of that. Data validation. Any value. Oh, hold on. Any value. OK. And so that should be like that. Perfect. And let's do one more. Um, data validation. Let's go list. Report to, reported to senior management. Okay, let's get rid of these ones. Data validation, uh, any value. So that is your change control log in Excel. Uh, you can use this template across any of your projects. Obviously, you can just reference them at the top here. Um, and hopefully that's really, really useful. Of course, you can change some of the formatting. You could wrap text. Um, you could change the, you know, the column width, etc. the colors. You could put anything in here, any branding for your organization. You can move the key to another uh, tab if you wanted. That's also another option if you didn't want it here. Um, but yeah, that's how to create a change control log in Excel. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do hit the like button. That tells me I should continue creating videos like this and do consider subscribing to my channel. If you head over to my channel, you'll notice that I've got a lot of different videos on building the core and key project management templates in Excel and even other platforms as well and project management solutions. And I've also got some training on um, project management in general. As I say, I've got one on change control log and that will be a link in the description. And finally, if you did want to buy this template, there's also a link in there too. So with all of that said, I hope you have an excellent day.